So it says that then use a loop to toss the coin 20 times. Then use a loop to toss the coin 20 times. Each time the coin is tossed, display the, the side you know, that's facing up. So each time this runs, basically, this is going to run 20 times. So each time we should go ahead and display the side that is facing up, <clears throat> right? And we know to display to display the side that's facing up, what we have to do is just system .out print, uh, print ln penny dot get side up because we know get side up tells us the side that's facing up, right? So let's do this. Copy the same line, and then we can change this to side facing up. We can even add noun here. So I have side facing up now, and then it's going to go ahead and display it. So we can run this just to, just just to see. So let's run this. I need to first compile it and then run it. It's going to be a long. All right, so <clears throat> okay. Um, well, this is weird. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Um, oh, well, hold on. I didn't toss the coin. That's why it's the same, right? I didn't toss it. I think <laughs> that's that's what we were missing. It says over here that the program should create an instance. Okay, so then use a loop. Then use a loop to toss the coin 20 times. Okay, use a loop to so we're missing this. The loop is going to toss the coin 20 times. Because each time the coin is tossed. So that means we have to toss the coin before we get the side of the coin. Each time the loop is iterating. So let's first go ahead and, and toss it. Right? So we can say penny, we can refer to the object dot toss. So once you toss it, get the value of it. So let's compile this and then let's run. Okay, so now let's see if it changes. Okay, so initially it was heads, side facing up now, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, tails. So we can see it's changing, and that's good. That's exactly what we want. When we run it again, it's going to be completely different. Tails, heads, tails, tails. All right, so we can see it's working. And then let, let's continue. The program should keep count of the number of times. Well, it didn't, let's see. Okay, so it says it should display the circuit. So we're doing it, we are displaying it, so that's fine. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's um, continue. The program should keep count of the number of times heads is facing up and the number of times tails is facing up and display those times after the loop finishes. Okay. So we have to keep track of how many, um, how many times heads was, is facing up and how many times, um, t uh, sorry, how many times, yeah, how many times um, we got heads and how many times we got tails, right? Basically, um, tails is facing up, heads is facing up. So we, let's go ahead and create variables to keep track of those, right? And so any time that it's facing up, we add one to a variable called, let's say, number of heads, all right, number of tails. We add a, so we are going to keep track of the, the, you know, that, those stats. So outside the loop, let's go ahead and create over here. Let's go ahead and create a variable. I should this up a little bit. Let's go ahead. I hope it's not confusing to you with the, all the code here. Um, yeah. All right. So I'll set a loop over here. Let's go ahead and create a variable and call. It's going to be an integer, right? Because it's going to keep track of a count of, let's say, either one, five, six. It's just a count. So int, I'm going to go ahead and call it number of heads. Number of heads. And let's set it to zero because once the program starts, we don't, you know, we haven't started counting. So everything is zero, okay? Until we start counting. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing for number of tails. These variables are going to keep track of how many times, let's say, heads, you know, we got heads and how many times we got tails, right? We're setting them to zero because when, once the program starts, you know, we don't, we haven't started counting, so we don't know the value of it. And anytime we toss the coin, anytime the, the, the coin is tossed here, let's check, first of all, to see if the side up is heads, and if it's heads, let's add one to number of heads. If it's tails, let's set, let's set tails to number of, um, so let's set number of tails to, well, <laughs> if, it, yeah, if it's heads, let's add one to number of heads. If it's tails, let's add one to number of tails. That's all I'm trying to say. So we can use an if statement in this while loop. Anytime the, the loop I trade and it, and it tosses a coin, let's check to see if the value, the value, the value that was returned is either head or tails. Now we can have an if statement over here. Um, but we, we can do it in a bunch of ways, but we, we know that this method, penny get side up is going to return the 
the um, so basically once it's, once it's tossed, we know we get side up is going to return the side the side up field the value of the side up field which is either heads or tails. So we can call this again. I mean, get side up is not really tossing the coin. It's only getting the side up. If you get if you call this hundred times, it's only it's going to print out the value of net field hundred times. So it doesn't really it doesn't really change anything. So we can say if okay penny dot get side up if you've tossed the coin and you get the side up right we know get side up is going to is, is returning the side up so it's going to return the side up here and if the value that's returned is equal to if penny dot side up is equal to the string exact heads right okay you get if penny dot get side up is equal to the string heads then we have a head right then that means this after this toss we got it we got a head. So now let's go ahead and add one to the heads number of heads variable. So in that case we say number of heads is going to be equal to what's already stored in number of heads plus one. Meaning if number of heads is zero initially and we, we found we found a head right, then it's going to be zero plus one and zero plus one gives you one. Now the whole result one is going to be stored in number of heads. If we get another head, number of heads will hold one, right? So we say one plus one it becomes two, and we are storing two the whole the whole result to two number of heads. So basically, we are accumulating, you know, we are we are accumulating um, basically the counts, all right? So we are, we are adding one each time, and we are keeping count of number of heads. Now this, okay, this here, there's a shortcut for this whole thing here. Right, you can use a shortcut or you can stick with this one. This can also be written as number of number of heads plus equals one. All right. We, you can think of this as you are adding one to number of heads. Okay. I'm adding one to number of heads. Or you can think of it this way. One is being added. Hold on. Um sorry. Um <laughs> you can so so yeah, we are adding <laughs> we are adding yeah, you're adding one to number of heads. Or you can think of it as one is being added to number of heads, I guess. <laughs> I think it's the same thing. Or you can think of it this way. Number of heads is being increased by one. <laughs> okay. So however however it helps you, you know, think about it. But this is, this is a shortcut for it. All right. So if penny dot get side up is equal to heads, all right, then number of heads is, is plus equals one. Now we don't have to call penny dot get side up again to check the, the other side. Else, right? So we don't have to call penny dot get side up to check again because we know the penny dot get uh, get side up method is either going to return heads or tails. So if it's not heads, then it's, that means it's tails, right? So we don't have to go ahead and create an else if and test to see if it returns tails. Although it's still going to work, although you can say else if penny dot get side up is equal to tails, then do something. Okay, now just to mention, I'm using double equal sign again, again to compare. Okay, so make sure you are, when you're comparing, you're doing this. All right, you're using double equal sign. Okay, so if it's not, it doesn't return heads, we can just say else, right? Because we know that then it's tails. So we add one to the tails variable. Or you can also um, be specific and, and, and type in if penny to get side up is equal to tails then add one to the tails variable but let's just keep it this way because if it's not heads then it's tails so if it's not um, heads then we want to then we know it's tails so let's keep track of the tails let's add one to the tails um, variable we can we, let, let's do this a long way now let's say number of tails is going to be equal to what's already stored in number of tails plus one it's the same as this you can also write it in this, a shortcut version and say number of tails plus equals one okay all right, so this is going to check for us, and this is going to keep track of each time that I trace. It's going to keep track of whether whether we got a head or we got a tail, and then and then we, um, we we add one to you know the respective variable. And after that, after this loop is done, this entire loop is done, we're going to have the number of heads and number of tails, right? So after this loop is done, let's display a message. This you know you know displaying the number of heads and the number of tails, right? So let's say system dot And let's just display a message saying that out, out of twenty tosses, we can we can keep this 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 variable. We can keep this twenty in the variable, and then we can call it here. So when we change that 
that, that number if you want to for example change the number of times that this loop iterates you can just simply change it in one place and it affects you know so many places we can do that actually we can do that let's just do that so it's going to be an integer right? let's say int we can actually make it as a well int let's just say int int number of tosses okay number of tosses let's set it to 20 and then we can just change this well let me tell me it says change this to number of tosses this 20 to number of tosses and then over here we can say that out of number of tosses okay no it will know the exact value in number of tosses so out of let's concatenate this with a variable number of tosses and then let's con continue the string and say out of number of tosses tosses so if it's 20 it's going to say out of 20 tosses um out of 20 to to tosses there were um let's see um yeah so there were uh 20 sorry actually <laughs> what am i thinking all right so there were now we have the va the value of the number of hits right so we, we can use it so there were number of hits concatenated with a string hits and it's concatenated with a string and say number of tails which is going to hold the number of tails variable a uh, value and then I'm, i know i'm going to go off the screen and i don't want to go off the screen so i'm going to concatenate it here and then hit enter break it up break it to a new line so th there are a number of hits hits and number of tails let's continue the string tails this way all right so now basically we're done right so let's let's try this and see what happens so compile this we have an error oh this is supposed to be a semicolon not a colon so sem semicolon compile this and we're fine now let's run this all right so we can see that everything's working initially the side initially facing up is heads it's, it's tossing this 20 times Okay, let, let's just make let's just change the content here. Side fishing. Let's let's change this to toss, right? We can just say toss, and we can concatenate this toss, right? We can concatenate it to. Oh, we have we have a concatenation sign here. So let's concatenate this toss to the current. Oops, what am I doing? <laughs> All right, so this is the side initially facing up. So <laughs> this is the side initially facing up. So that, that's 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 fine, right? I wanted to change this here actually. Side facing up. Instead of side facing up, let's say toss. And then let's concatenate it to the current toss, because current toss is going to keep track of our current toss, right? So let's concatenate it to the current toss. So if it's one, then it's going to say toss one. If it's two, it's going to say toss two. So current toss, we're concatenating the string to that. And we are concatenating that, right, to the, hold on. Yeah, and we are concatenating that to, uh, let's concatenate it to another string, and then have a colon here, space, and then concatenate it to the get side up. So let's try this and see if we have any errors. All right, so we don't have any errors. So run this, and we can see that it's working. Side initially facing up tails, toss one, toss two tails, so we can see that this is actually helping. Out of 20 tosses, there were nine heads and 11 tails, and we can count it and see. And the good thing about this is the reason this is good because um, this variable here is good is we can now change the number of tosses to 10, only 10, and it's just going to go ahead and, and run, run 10 times instead of 20 times. You can see out of 10 tosses, there are five heads, five tails, and we can count it. Let's just use a smaller value so we can see. Let's use five tosses, compile this, and run it. And see, it says set initially facing up his heads. We have actually one, two, three, four heads, one tail. So it says out of five tosses, there were four heads and one tail or tails. You can see it's, it's, it's actually di dynamically doing that. If you wanted to space this out, you can add a new line character after displaying, um, either after, if they're after, if they're after displaying the side initially phasing up or the before it displays the toss, toss, you know, the toss one all the way down. So let's do this. Well, well, well this is in the loop, so in that case, it's going to actually separate all these lines. Let's add a new line character here. Let's concatenate it with a new line character, which is a backslash n, and the backslash n is an escape sequence. The backs after the after the backslash in a, in a double co um, double quotation string, it's going to expect one of the escape characters, and they all have functions. So to the backslash n, when the interpreter sees the backslash n, it 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 does something, right? It it basically moves the position from where it's at to the next line. So if after displaying uh, this, is going to be here, right? 
So after displaying that, it's going to see the backslash n, and it's what it's that does is it's, it, it does is it moves the position from where it's at here to the next line here, and anything that comes after that backslash n, that new line character, right, is going to be displayed. Uh, well, so for first of all, system that out print ln, okay, system that out print ln ends with a new line character already. So after printing out whatever you told it to print, it's going to move the position from where it's at to the next line here. So the position will be here. Okay, and then it sees the new line character, the backslash n, which also does the same thing. It moves the position from where it's at to the next line here. So now it's going to move here now. Okay, and anything that comes after that new line character is going to be split from here going. So in that case, it's going to be a, an empty line here. So this is going to just create an empty line for us nicely. Here, like that. And we can do the same thing for this one too. After displaying, we don't want that in a loop because if you do that in a loop, it's going to actually you know, have a new line character in every loop. So before it displays the out of five tosses, there were two heads. Let's also add a new line character here in the string backslash n. When the interpreter sees this, it doesn't print it. It's a special command kind of, kind of. It sees it and then it moves the position from. So basically, after this, uh, before it displays this out of five tosses, it's going to see the new line character and it's going to move the position from where it's at here to the next line here. And anything that comes after after the, after the new line character, which is the out of you know that whole string, is going to be displayed from here going. In essence, we're going to have a new line, a new line here, an empty line here. So now let's compile this and then run it. And you can see it's now spaced up nicely. You can see it's working. This is three heads and then two tails. And then we can change this back to 20 to, to the original, original question. And then you can see it's working nicely. So yeah, we're, all right, so we're done with this program. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, take care of yourself. If you have any questions, let me know. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right then, bye-bye.